Hello, I'm Kaz at Mainly Pilates. A long post, but I hope it can help. Lots of good news, lots of bad news. I want to talk about pain. So I am a SUP coach and I am a Pilates instructor with a qualification for orthopedic conditions. I can't diagnose, I'm not, not qualified to diagnose, but if you know what your diagnosis is, then I can help you, show you. All this can be done in front of the telly. Let's pause it, shall we? Okay, so there's two big types of pain, chronic pain and acute pain. Acute pain is right at the beginning of pain. You have a trauma. A trauma is not a mental issue on this occasion. A trauma can be a car crash, falling off a horse, falling off your paddleboard, falling down, tripping up over the stairs. So if I speak specifically for paddleboards today, you could have a bit of whiplash or a back, back pain caused simply by your board coming to an abrupt stop and you go like this. It's just like a car crash, but not as, as severe. So that can cause back pain, knee pain, neck pain. That kind of thing is a trauma. You know what caused the pain. So if you can manage it yourself, if you feel, oh, it's, it, it's not that bad, then you must use, as soon as you can, the RICE technique. R for rest, I for ice, ice is amazing, C for compress, and E is for elevate. So when you're watching telly at night, you want to rest it. So sit on your sofa with it elevated above your hip, and as high as you can really, if you can get it above your heart, but certainly above your hip. If it's your arm, rest it on pillows. So, and if it's your back, you want to get comfortable. There's your rest. Ice is incredible. It um, clears a lot of inflammation and it is quite amazing. Compress. So if you've hurt your knee, you want to go and get a bandage, don't you? Now, if you can manage without a bandage, I would say do so because all that's doing is giving you false confidence. So you carry on your day, whiz, 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 when actually a bit of rest would have been better for it. But if you have got to go for that walk or you have got to do that something or other, then that's when you put the compression on. But I would say try and manage without. And elevate, sit in there watching telly, foot in the air, or your arm rested on pillows. You want it high as you can, above your heart if possible, above your hip if possible, and your back comfy. What you mustn't do is become immobile. So you've hurt your shoulder, don't just stick it in a sling and wait and wait and wait weeks because you could end up with a frozen shoulder. You could end up with an immobile ankle. Now I've been through the system a few times because I don't get ill but I do get injured. And I've been through the system and what I have learned, top tip, if you wait the six weeks for it to die down, after that it suddenly it becomes um, chronic pain. When it's old pain, it's chronic pain. When it's new pain, it's acute pain. And so when it becomes chronic pain, your brain starts to interfere with it. And I'm not kidding, it gets worse. And it's not because you're making it up. It's a real thing. Your brain is so powerful that it can make, a, your brain can do all sorts of weird things to you. So you don't want it to get ingrained because honestly it will get worse. So my top tip is to go rewind. And after two weeks, if it hasn't got better, bear in mind, this isn't a trauma. This is if something has happened and you're dealing with it but it hasn't improved then make an appointment to see your doctor or before three weeks are up go to a a and e or a medical center but don't leave it any longer they can then put you in the system if you go to your gp and say my knee's hurting without a doubt he'll say he'll be very nice but he he will probably say oh i think i know what that is you need an x-ray they'll book you for an x-ray which might be six weeks away then when you get to your x-ray, they might say you need physio. So then they have, to revert, they have to revert back to the doctor who sent you and he will tell you, um, yes, you need physio and he'll book you in. But you might be in another six weeks wait. So that's where the problem is, is you don't know what you're dealing with. It bloody well hurts. So get that appointment early on. So you're in the system. And please, 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 if you are feeling great, just phone and cancel your appointment so somebody else can have it. Don't not attend and don't attend for the fun of it. Just cancel the appointment and they will be very grateful. So I have injuries and at the moment I know that now that I have osteoarthritis in this hip 
and I have something wrong with this hip and I'm waiting for an MRI scan very, very soon. I've got the appointment. So I know I haven't broken anything. You would know, you wouldn't be able to move it. So I know that I've got to deal with it. And when I saw my consultant, he did say, imagine how bad you would be if you didn't do your Pilates. And I've got this um, massive, massive ad age and I tell everybody, movement is medicine, health is wealth. And a lot of these things, please don't rely on our vastly, vastly overworked NHS to sort you out. If you go to a physio, you'll probably get an appointment every couple of weeks or appointment every month. And what they'll do is give you exercises to go away and do. And the number of people that come to me with injuries because physio hasn't worked. And I, I'm terrible, but I say it like it is. Did you do the exercises that the physio gave you? Well, no, no, I did them on Wednesday. When I had physio, it was 80 bloody minutes a day, but I did it. Now, I haven't got 80 minutes in a day to do, to do um, physio, so I did 20 minutes in the morning, and then I did 20 minutes when I got home from work, and I did the rest while I'm watching telly. And it's really easy to do it properly while you're watching telly. So I, I doubt you'll get 80 minutes, but you will get a bunch of exercises that might take you 20 minutes. So please, please do those exercises exactly as they say. See it as a prescription. If they were going to give you uh, tablets, you'd take them, wouldn't you? So this is a prescription of exercise. Please just do it. Okay, so we've done the rice. And then the other thing I'm saying is keep mobile. So if you've hurt your shoulder, you might just do this. As long as you're keeping everything mobile so that when it's better, it works. If it's your back, all I'm saying is if you can manage this, look from the side, there's hardly anything going on. But if you can manage this, manage. If you can manage more, manage more. So you go up to, not into pain. So my hip, it's bloody painful. Things like getting in and out of the car, anything involving, you know, going upstairs. Um, when I'm paddle boarding, when I get one foot on the board and then I've got to pull the board to get the other foot on. My God, it hurts. But I've got to do it because I'm not giving up paddle boarding. Once I'm actually paddle boarding, I'm fine. So I just have to bite, literally take a deep breath and get over that and do it. So I've got my bad hips. So if anybody here is listening now and got bad hips, um, also there's something going on with my back. Um, so every morning before I get out of bed, I literally arch my back a little bit, tail tuck. I just do that and then I get bigger and bigger until I'm at my biggest. And then I do about three of those, that's all. And then I put my feet here and I rock over to the side a little bit, side a little bit, side a little bit. And then I go as large as I can without any pain. And then I do three of those. So then my back is completely better. So I know it's the bed, but I should get a new bed, shouldn't I? Anyway, this is why I'm talking about my hips now. So I've been watching telly this morning, the, the piano before I go to work, uh, it's on record, and I've been doing my hip exercises. So all I'm doing is sitting back watching telly, doing this. Now, because I've been doing it, look how much mobility I've got now. Before I started, I was probably about here. And then you do it bit by bit. You don't go into pain, you go up to pain, okay? And then suddenly what happens is on the out breath, so you take a big inhale, breathe out. And as you breathe out, you go a tiny bit further. But actually right now I have no pain here at all. This morning I did. And you keep doing that day by day while you're watching telly at night instead of sitting on the sofa and slobbing, do this. Right, so this morning, from not being able to, this, this is literally zero to hero. Okay, and then another thing I've been doing is sitting with my legs crossed and just bouncing. So after this morning's physio that I gave myself, I can now get to here. There's no way I could do that earlier on. Always do both sides, so cross over, and this side has always been better and is better. So I'm there 
If I pushed any harder, I would be in pain, but I'm not going to push any harder. I'm up to, not into pain. Now, if you went to see a physio, they're not going to do that to you. They are not going to make you sit there and do this. They're going to give you the exercise, show it to you and send it away. And you've got to do it. I'm flabbergasted, aren't I? I did say it was a long post. OK, so here's the takeaway. There is acute pain, which is sudden from a trauma, possibly. And there is chronic pain, which is something that's old pain that could be not from a trauma, but just could have built up over time, like my arthritis. It's not suddenly did something and caused it. So there's your different types of pain. And the next takeaway is keep mobile. So you do whatever you can do just to keep mobile while you're in the system waiting to see somebody to get diagnosed. And I just wish you all the luck.